as a motivator, it's quite embarrassing to share this thing with you. When I ask uh, students and um, professionals if they have any questions, most of the time they ask, how can I um, improve my concentration or focus? They say that um, the biggest problem is just uh, they cannot keep their minds in one place, which is mostly studies and work at hand. Now, you'd ask me what's embarrassing about that? Well, for as long as I knew, this was never a problem for me. I never felt a situation whereby I could not focus on something that I wanted to focus on, no matter how many distractions surrounded me at that time. So um, to relate to their problems is always difficult. However, being a counselor and motivator, I can't just uh, tell you what I just told you to them. And so I um, work backwards towards a situation whereby myself I would be unable to focus and eventually I get to the place that they are in. What seems to happen to them is that um, somehow the muscle that is related to concentrating and focusing in their minds is either weak or atrophied. As a result, they are um, easily distracted and they can't pull back their focus to their desired object. I think that it is something similar to the lenses of the eyes, which uh, can't um, focus the object on the retina accurately, thus causing short-sightedness or long-sightedness. As a result, we give uh, those people, respectively, concave lenses and convex lenses to correct their focus of light on the retina so that they have a clear picture in their brains. Now, focus of uh, the mind is not something uh, different than uh, the focus of the eye lens, I think. But again, this is just my hypothesis at this time. So far, um, the advices that I've given to people seem to have worked. So I will stick to this theory until I find a new one and um, this one fails me. However, many times people cannot focus for genuine reasons like uh, overthinking, which again has most likely genuine reasons like um, threats or imminent danger that has been ignored or um, the solution of which hasn't been sought. So the mind will keep bombarding the focus and thus the consideration is lost, no matter how strong the focus muscles are. Again, if your lack of focus you think is related to uh, overthinking, I suggest that you read my book, How to Manage Overthinking. However, if it's not overthinking that is your problem, then um, the following, uh, section will help you. So as I mentioned to you earlier, focus in um, my United Unified Motivation Theory is a muscle. So take a look at the diagram. Again, it consists of uh, the upper set and the lower set. In the uh, first diagram, you'll see a green circle surrounded by various objects. They are the distractions whereas uh, the red object is the uh, actual object that we want to concentrate on. It could be uh, a particular problem we are planning to solve or a particular subject or a topic or a job that was given to us. Now, the green circle represents the um, muscle of concentration during uh, meditation or even before and after meditation. So what happens when we uh, meditate or try to focus while awake is that um, the various distractions pull the um, green circle towards them Consequently, as you can see in the second diagram, the um, green circle now becomes uh, spread around like a blotch of ink and uh, not a single focus is able to reach the uh, main object which is a bit further away. Then finally, the outcome is a 
drained focus shown by the last diagram. The concentration muscle is so tired that uh, it even gives up on the objects of distraction as well as the main object. Thus, we are not able to concentrate and this is what happens. Now in uh, unified meditation, we are aware that um, focus is a muscle. However, we are also aware that um, just by exercising the focus is not enough. Let me explain. How do you think that uh, a professional football player like um, Ronaldo kicks a ball? Does he just use his uh, legs? Because uh, as you know, that's what actually hits the ball. Or does he use his whole body from um, the hips to the shoulders to the arms and even to the or the leg that is not hitting the ball. Voila, you got it. He, he used his whole body as a unit. Similarly, to be able to use the muscle of focus, you have to use other muscles. So this one I have shown in the form of a hand that I've called here the focus hands. Ah, ah, ah. So what I'm trying to say is just by trying to focus on the um, red object will not work. First of all, you have to engage the focus hands through various techniques that I will list down below. And uh, fundamentally, these uh, focus hands will move the various objects of distractions around your mind so that uh, your focus muscle can uh, zoom in like a laser on the actual um, main object as shown in the diagram. Now you'll say that in theory it's very sound and uh, it almost is too simple to be possible. But it really works. Those focus hands come into activity because the lower three components of uh, unified meditation are perfected. That is the posture is perfect, the breathing is perfect and the unlinking has been done. It will be very difficult for the focus hand to work if those uh, objects of distractions were uh, tied by a psychological um, string to the uh, mind. So unlinking must have severed those links. The next step then is um, to activate that focus hand by just imagining it and uh, it will do its job. Next, you can see in the diagram consisting of a graph where the x-axis is the number of distraction and the y-axis is the focus level. In traditional medicine, you'll see that uh, the more distractions there are, the less is the focus level. This is mainly because the three components have not been uh, perfected and there is no concept of the focus hands. Then uh, the blue line represents unified meditation where uh, the above have been done. So uh, the more distractions they are, the more perfect the system works. And the last graph shows that uh, the more the focus level, the more the mind power in any type of uh, meditation, which is quite obvious. Now I will uh, go briefly through the various techniques that we can use to increase our capacity to focus. The most uh, obvious technique would be to close your eyes and uh, imagine that um, you want to focus on say the image of a cow for example. Then uh, you will keep your attention on that cow. As soon as you do, you do that various thoughts and feelings will come like um, what somebody said to you and how it made you feel, the pending errands, the bleak future that you hold maybe, the feeling of loneliness you are feeling and so on. So now what you need to do is keep your focus on the uh, cow. Then um, using that focus hand, try to um, push away the other thoughts and feelings. You can do that by uh, simply adding a thought to them or feeling to them. 
if you remember something that uh, somebody said, add a thought that why does it matter? This rhetoric question will um, push away that thought. Then uh, the remembrance of a pending event can be pushed away by uh, asking it what time it is uh, in the day. And uh, most likely, there is no way you can run that errand at that particular time. So ask yourself a rhetoric question like, what's the point of uh, thinking of this errand? If it really bothers you, just make sure that you note it down on a piece of paper or post it or best if you um, use um, a task master application on your mobile phone and write it down there with a reminder. In this way, this thought also will uh, pass and stop annoying you. Now, if you're worried about your future career, again, ask a rhetoric question. What's the point of uh, being worried about your grandson when you are not even married? First, let's plan about finding a boy or a girl, then falling in love, getting married, and then we can worry about the grandson. This kind of rhetoric is so powerful uh, in um, dispersing the distracting thoughts. Then the feeling of loneliness can be counteracted uh, by a decision to learn social skills by which you can make more friends and still not have your privacy or um, safe space disrupted which is the main reason people become lonely that is the fear of losing that space now once this is a logical decision is taken that thought also vanishes away so in this way the focus hand managed to move all the thoughts and feelings and thus your focus muscle is fully able to focus on the uh, red object as shown. In this way, it's very much like Ronaldo kicking the penalty using his whole body muscles, not just his feet. Focus meditation is very effective and uh, you should practice it um, until you can uh, use the uh, combination of the focus hands and focus muscles even when uh, you are in the most difficult situations and uh, bombarded with uh, thousands of uh, distractions. And yet you need to focus on a particular agenda because your life almost depends on that. We talked about uh, TM or Transcendental Meditation earlier as a kind of uh, mantra meditation. But here um, we use uh, mantra more than an unlinking process and it now helps us actually focus so the object of the focus is the mantra itself. So let the focus hands try to um, remove the other distractions as I have described earlier. Mantras involve you making sounds either uh, physical or just mental. So it uh, increases the strength of your focus. Although I do not uh, particularly like this uh, meditation, it's still mentioned in various um, books, so I'll just cover it. Just try to sit down and uh, look at a candle and uh, try to focus on the image of the physical candle. And at the same time, make sure that your focus hands, as I've described earlier, are in working condition. If you watch any um, videos of um, Hindu rituals you will notice that um, there are some uh, pundits who throw rice into the fire and that is called sacrifice so uh, the logic is uh, you are sacrificing your desires or thoughts or feelings into the fire so in terms of uh, unified meditation this is the um, physical manifestation of the uh, focus hands if um, you are uh, into experiential learning, this is also a very good technique. But uh, to be honest, I never had to use this one. Just have a small pit of fire and uh, whenever distracting thoughts come, throw the rice into that fire by chanting some mantra that uh, you are discarding that particular distraction so that you can keep your focus on the main 
object that you want to concentrate on. This meditation technique has been very useful for me to uh, move into the higher levels of focus. You can download the banal beats of various frequencies from YouTube. You will need a earphone that is of a stereotype. So the theory is that um, in one year, a certain frequency will be sent and the other year, another frequency of sound will be sent. Then let's say that um, from the right ear, the frequency of uh, 1.5 Hertz is sent and uh, in the left ear a frequency of 1 hertz is sent so the difference is 0 0.5 hertz now this is the frequency that will uh, hit your brain before i explain more you need to understand a concept called resonance it is the uh, phenomenon whereby um, the ob frequency of two objects match and as a result, the new frequency becomes uh, of infinite magnitude. This is the same principle used in radio waves, television waves, and your own uh, mobile phone. So what would happen is that uh, the 0 0.5 Hertz wave would resonate with that particular frequency of your brain and uh, create a resonance. Of course, the lower the level of hertz the more calm and focused one becomes you can say that um, the uh, binaural beats acts as an external focus hand it is very effective when um, you are uh, tired or your focus hands are tired and uh, you find it difficult to give um, rhetorical questions to the distractions or um, you don't find yourself creative enough to find uh, quick actionable solutions for the problems that uh, each of your distractions produce enough for them to go away at the moment basically in theory your mind will vibrate at the frequency of the binaural hertz in practice it's not that easy and uh, you would have uh, to master the earlier three components of posture, breathing, and unlinking for it to work uh, effectively. But when it works, it does magic. There are so much that enables fantastic mind work and uh, indescribable uh, height of soul work. So as we did in the earlier components, let me just describe to you the various levels you can enjoy uh, in the process of uh, perfecting your focus. In the basking level, you should um, be able to um, think of that cow and uh, see its color and the patches on its body. You should um, hear its sound and um, feel its movement. So the distractions should be able to um, be dispersed by your focus hands without too much effort. You could use that um, newfound capacity to concentrate in your studies or in your uh, job at hand. When you are in the hiking level, then um, you can uh, try to take up uh, new uh, work that will increase your uh, number of distracting uh, thoughts and feelings and yet both your focus muscles and focus hands would be able to uh, keep working and keeping you on track with full concentration at the level of driving a car then um, the focus would be retained even when uh, you are faced with um, a dramatic situation that uh, was totally unplanned and unexpected. Still, you could keep your focus on the job or studies or that particular thought by um, telling the rhetoric to your mind that stuff is not in your control, so why bother? Now, that's a very powerful uh, state to be in. People look at awe at uh, such a person whose focus is unbent when everybody else is um, disrupted. 
So at the level four, somebody can be focused when they are even physically disrupted. I like this um, level a lot. I go to, or I used to go to um, various uh, discotheques when I was young. And I used to practice this level of focus. So there would be so much noise and uh, people would be shouting, dancing, shouting, partying around me. But uh, I would just stay calm and uh, focus on the thought that I was having at that particular time. Sometimes I had the um, audacity to sit down uh, in a lounge chair and actually meditate. It just felt so great to be able to focus despite all that noise and also all those um, astonished eyes of people on you and still having no effect on your focus. That's true. Um, flying focus level so at the rocket level i would like to give you the example of um, the uh, master archer called uh, arjun in the story of mahabharata so it was uh, the various uh, brothers who were uh, given the job to shoot a bird on a tree so everybody had their bow and arrow ready then the master asked uh, each of the students what they saw. One student said he saw the tree. The other student said he saw the bird. And Arjuna said that he saw the eye of the bird. Needless to say, he hit the bird's eyes and won the uh, contest. Now this is uh, focus at the highest level that we are talking about. My own version of uh, this rocket level um, focus is to sit in meditation when my day was been disastrous and um, to be able to concentrate on the eternal existence of mine, unlinking myself from the world and the problems that I was facing. It's very hard, but um, it's always a wonderful feeling after you sit out of the meditation. At the final level of swimming, focus is a, a natural state of your being. No matter how um, complex, difficult, embarrassing, aggravating, annoying, risky the situation is, your focus muscles do not lose sight of the main object and your focus hands do not stop throwing rhetoric questions and uh, quick solutions to the distracting uh, objects in your thoughts. It's just so natural, like breathing, or uh, should I say, uh, in uh, terms of unified meditation, breathlessness.